Hey everybody, welcome back to Sling and Dirt TV presented by Joe's Carding. We got one hell of a show for you today. We got me and Joe Dirt. <laughs> we sure do. And we got, we're going to have a discussion on women in racing. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a real touchy subject, but it's going to be a great subject. We're going to be talking with uh, Jerry Pospisil from Off Road Speedway. Yeah, we're going to have another Songer Says. Yep. Uh, then we're going to be talking about tarps in our tech segment. That's right, tarps in the tech segment. That's right, so, and then we'll follow it up with some fan, fan of, the of the week. So stay tuned, it's Sling and Dirt TV. Everybody, welcome back to Sling and Dirt TV. Uh, of course, everybody knows my name is Buddy Ray. Uh, we got Jack Crawl right here, or as I call him, Joe Dirt, but that's beside the point. Uh, you had a great idea. Talking about Say women, that again. You had an idea worth exploring. <laughs> women in racing. And it's about damn time somebody give the women in this sport some credit. I, I remember 20 years ago when I started, you didn't ever see a female driver. I'm not saying that they weren't out there, but nowhere near what they are today. Yeah, and you know what? We can't do it without the women in our lives, the women in racing, and I think it's great that the girls are out there having a good time, and I think it's great that they're starting to kick the guys' asses from, I mean, we've seen all the highlights, I mean, years and years of racing that we've been doing ourselves. I mean, I've seen the population of, of the female drivers just double. Oh, yeah. You know. You know, and I, I like how you, we were talking before we filmed about the number of female drivers, but when you take away the female drivers, the amount of young women in the sport, or women in general in the sport, just because you're not in the driver's seat doesn't mean you're not in the sport. Exactly. Uh, you know, women like my wife, Rachel, your wife, Sandy, that support us. Any racer whose wife supports the husband or boyfriend of owning a race car, that actually unspokenly helps the sport grow. We, we don't have to deal with our our uh, wives or girlfriends. I can't talk today. We can't. The, the sport won't survive if the women aren't backing the guys. Now, or you'll be single, guys. Or you'll be single. <laughs> or vice versa, guys. If your lady's a driver, support them. You got to have the support there. But when you go outside of the driver's seat, uh, I think it's Nelson Volbrick's mother is a scorer at the racetrack. Sure. We were talking to, or I was talking to her, uh, you were playing in the weeds with a mower somewhere. I was. When I was talking to her about being a scorer, and she was talking about how tough that job is of scoring, oh dear lord, I know how tough it is because I tried it one night with Amy Shirky and them up at Shelby oh, County Speedway. My god, when you talk about, you know, thank god for transponders, you know, no transponders, scoring Oh yeah, it was a mess because they used to one person would have to like score four or five cars at a time. They had to keep track of their cars and try and figure out where they place, and it was just a mess. I mean, and then you take people like Racine Hayden and those. Guys I was that just thinking Racine you know, Hayden. If you that girl works her ass her, off. Oh yeah, absolutely works you know, her ass to, off to, to bring a, a, a good product to the races to provide a great environment for everybody to enjoy, whether you're a fan or a driver. I mean, that whole Hayden crew have got, have got it down, and that's why their their track is kicking some butt. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, I go to ID Speedway, and then I see Lisa Kaziski. Right. Lisa Kaziski is, I I love Papa Joe to death, as I call him, but Lisa Kaziski might be the heartbeat of that track. Yep. Now, I'm not going to go out here and tell everybody that she's the one that sets the rules and all this and all that. It's the administrative, holds everything together. She's the glue, the fabric of the track. Now, Joe's got a lot of really kick-ass employees at ID Speedway, and they all do an awesome job, but you go over to you go over to ID's office, and Lisa Kaziski's in her office with her two big screen TVs on the wall, using them as computer monitors, and she's doing the SOMR series, you know, keeping track of the points, the bragging rights, the weekly stuff. You go to the track, she's the one that checks us in, gives us our transponders, right. make sure the lineups are done. But then, and, I it's take, a thing, and that's a thankless job. Oh, it is. Because we're always growly when we go. Oh, the lineups yeah. aren't posted, or 
you know, transponders, yep. didn't work, we gotta go back and oh my God, and get another one. But then you go, then I, I take a step back from Lisa and I look at the broader view, you got Eagle and IE. You got two very well-known high profile retired drivers mm -hmm. in Joe Kaziski and Roger Hayden. Right. Uh, love them or hate them is, it is what it is. They're very successful in what they right. did in their racing careers. But when you go one generation down, who's the heart and soul of those tracks? Right, it's the girls. It's the girls. You know, and I think that's really cool. The guys, this has been such a male dominated sport for so long. It is really intriguing to me. What would happen if we had four or five young ladies out there, or, or you know, ladies in general, running a track? Because there's one thing I've learned in my household, you sure as hell don't piss mom off. No. It just didn't. don't work. No way. It's usually not a good idea. You know, the women usually, uh, they rule with an iron fist. And I'm not knocking that whatsoever. You know, you, you put a lady you up there. You need an iron fist. Well, uh, yeah. not headed as you are. Yeah, sometimes. That's probably why Rachel's in such good shape that she's always using her iron fist knocking me around the house and on the yard like Mike Tyson on the Vanderbilt. I just, I just get the look. I yeah. know better. I, I yeah, know you don't want to be on the receiving end of my wife's iron fist, yeah. trust me. But anyways, you know, the, the other thing is we got to look at is the increase in the, in the female drivers and the success that, I mean, I look back when I first started racing and of course I started out at Eagle in the Sport Compacts and back then, you know, you had Amanda Riley's. Yeah. Melissa Cronin, you know, those were the, the only two girls out there at the time. And now you've got a whole Cronin clan with plenty of girls. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda's still going, plus you've yep. got a ton of other girls out there. And I know at I-80, you know, like Lindsey Tyson and, and those girls, and they are beating up on the guys. Oh yeah, you go, I mean, to, Western, they, you go to Western Iowa, you got Amanda Lovejoy. Right. Um, I think she's married with a different name now. I, I can't remember. But I, I do know her at one time her name was Amanda Lovejoy. She uh, raced over there with Vic Lovejoy, who's her father. Uh, you go over, well, you got McKenna, who just won over at uh, Knoxville Speedway the sprint cars. Yep. Impressive, congratulations. Yeah, impressive. Uh, you had the girl over in Eastern Iowa. You know, unfortunately she was in that sport, Accident, com that yeah. sport compact. But you're right, the number of women that are coming on board as racers has just exploded in the last five or six years. This is not, you know, it, it's still, when you go down in the pits, it's still predominantly men drivers. Sure. But would I call it a male dominated sport anymore? No, not at all. No. no. I, I would say it's probably a 60 40 split, 60% male, 40% female. But within the next 10 years, I see the women. Women in the sport of dirt track racing is going to help the sport. And here's why. Some people are going to agree with me, some people are not going to agree with me. I have never seen, oh God, this is going to, how do I put this? I've never seen a undesirable female in a race car. Every female race car driver I've ever seen is pretty good looking. So here's what happens. Every guy wants to be with her and every girl wants to be her. They want to be that star. They want to be that Shaley Bay. They want to be this Lindsay Oates. They want to be this Lacey Tuttle. They want to be this person. The guys are clamoring around them trying to show off. The girl's like, yeah, you see, you drive a little racer. That's cool. I drive an 800 horsepower sprint car. That's right. <laughs> Pound sand. Exactly. You know, and so the men want to try and impress those female drivers, but then you got the young girls going, wow, I want to be Shaley Bay or wow, I want to be Amanda Riley, or, or wow. And so you have these female drivers, they're like gods to these young girls. Well, and, and, it's, and it's bringing new well, blood and life. The thing it is too, is that I've seen a lot of, is you know, a lot of these girls are either married or getting married, and they're taking their children to those go-kart tracks. Now, I mean, go-kart racing has really exploded in the last few years, at least mm -hmm. around our area, as far as the dirt track oh, go-kart yeah. circuit. That's something that these, promoters have added to their tracks and stuff. And they're, these people are getting their kids involved and it's girls too, I mean, lots of girls. So those girls are gonna oh, yeah. step up from go-karts and go into these other classes. So you know, I would expect in the next five years, 10 years, you're gonna see, it's gonna be 50-50. Well, remember the uh, the Ava Grop? Right. I mean, look at Ava Grop. She's gonna be a heartbreaker when she gets older. You know, and she wants to go into modified, so. I remember, you know, 10 years ago when we started seeing a, a young lady here, there, getting into the cars, 
And what would happen, uh, and I'll, this kind of reminds me of Mary Lynn's, you know, out of uh, Elma, Nebraska, but what happened back then was like, oh, well, the guys are just gonna go out there and they're gonna push them around. And I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> if you've ever pissed off a lady, the last thing I'm gonna do is piss Especially off a lady. Especially when it knows how to drive. <laughs> a 2,000 pound plus car. Exactly. That's like, trying to irritate you the know, Incredible Hulk and not expect not to have any ramifications. And that's something that has changed too. It used to be that the guys, that, you know, back when there was hardly any girls, they'd pick on the girls and rough them up just to let them know who was boss. It didn't like that anymore. Well, no, when we were at Clark County Speedway, I remember uh, young Mary Lynn, she's getting her tail feathers uh, ruffled. And I am laughing my butt off in the car. I actually took my visor, went up like this, and I was like, you go, girl. Yeah. I mean, it was the funniest thing, and she she took it right to the guys. You know, I would I would much rather, you know, maybe upset your car a little bit going in the corner, just hard racing with you. But I sure as hell ain't gonna do that to a lady because I'm telling mm -hmm. you, there is no scorn like a woman scorn. Yeah. And I am no. We can beat and bang and drink a beer and forget about it. <laughs> ain't gonna happen with a lady. And I can tell you a little story about certain ladies who have actually got into fist fights with guys in the pits and I've had to break them up before and you know who you are Melissa Cronin <laughs> so don't think that these girls are gonna take your guff and not want to kick your tail in in the pits either you know you so. know I always got to wonder if a Cronin is whooping your tail does that mean you suffered from Crohn's disease <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that one alone I tell you what this is Slingin' Dirt TV. We're gonna go to a commercial break and we're gonna take or talk to one of our sponsors and we'll be right back here in a few moments. Welcome back to Swing and Dirt TV, presented by Joe's Carding. Here's Jerry Pospisil with Off-Road Speedway in Norfolk, Nebraska. Hi, my name is Jerry Pospisil, Norfolk, Nebraska. I'm the track promoter at the new Off-Road Speedway. This was kind of an ironic start. We, uh, Riviera Raceway, which was here for 50 years, uh, decided to close. And uh, several of us got together with Kevin Signer out here at Off-Road Ranch, which is a motorcycle track and uh, convinced him that we should keep the, uh, the stock car thing alive and uh, finally he did agree and so last year we started to approach this thing in April I'm sorry not April but I guess it was in August is when we first uh, went to the Planning Commission to try to get this thing through and we had some problems where we had some conflict with neighbors and so forth and so on but but as it progressed we finally got the okay in December I believe it was and uh, so we started to build a track and uh, lo and behold come April the track is done and you'll see some pictures of it probably the fastest racetrack I've ever seen built from the ground up because there was nothing here but 40 acres of corn when we started in December but we had a good week uh, a couple of good weeks in December to get started in January to get started with this thing so it progressed really, really well. We had a lot of support from the local people. We had a lot of support from the local businesses. And uh, Kevin really didn't know much about races or racetracks or how they're run. So he had his brother, which is Brian Signer, uh, get involved with this real heavily. And, and Brian is actually the one that built this racetrack from the ground up. He's the one that did all the homework, uh, all the designing and everything like that uh, to get the track like it is today so and uh, I went out as a track promoter and we tried to sell signs and promotion signs to our uh, to our businesses in town and was very very fortunate that we've sold I think almost 40 or 45 billboards which will help support the track so we started racing uh, I think our practice was April 25th and then we started May 2nd uh, for our first ride at night of racing and uh, our classes are pretty much similar to everyone else's. We have uh, our uh, 
compact class, which is our four cylinders, then we have our hobby stock class, and then we go to our street stocks, and then we go to our sport mods or B modifieds, and then we have our late models. Uh, we're very fortunate in this area for some reason. Late models is our biggest class we have. Uh, most tracks don't have that many. We average anywhere between 20 and 25 late models per week. So if a person's interested in racing a, a limited late model, uh, you know, Norfolk is the place to be. Uh, the first night we had our open house here. Uh, it was way above and beyond our expectations. In fact, we run out of grandstand room. We run out of our beverages. We run out of food. Uh, our parking lot was full. And uh, lo and behold, we got rained out the last two features. But uh, great, great report from the public uh, saying that we needed this race facility in this town. And, uh, and it's here. And we got to thank Kevin Signer. And, and his brother Brian for building it because without those two people, uh, you know, this would not have happened. With the amount of uh, support that you had now, you had a lack of support early in the initial stages. But now that, you know, the stands are full and people see what you're doing and how you're running the track, have you seen a complete turnaround where the city of Norfolk is actually starting to stand behind the track? The city of Norfolk, I think, always was behind it, was always behind it. Uh, the problem, of course, is like anything else, when you build something that has noise involved or dust or dirt involved, uh, some of the neighbors don't like that because it disturbs them. So, so the city was really conscientious about that and they put a lot of restrictions on us. For example, uh, we have to start, uh, we, or we can't start Saturday afternoons before 5.30 and we have to be done by 11. Uh, and there are certain days during, or certain times during the summer that we are, we are closed uh, for the Madison County Fair and, and for other, you know, for other activities. Uh, they put some pretty stringent, and we have to run mufflers on our race cars to keep the noise down. So they were pretty, they were trying to look out for the neighbors as well as they definitely wanted, they definitely wanted a racetrack because whether people think so or not, a racetrack in this area, which is race oriented people, uh, a lot of dollars turn in a week. You know, when you bring in 1,500 people in the stands and 100 racers, these people eat out, they buy gas, they, you know, they go to Walmart. Money turns over and, and it's a big dollar that the city of Norfolk did not want to lose. So they were actually for it. And now that the track is built, we've got people coming to us that are business owners saying they want to buy billboard signs. They want to be involved with a racetrack. And uh, that, of course, that makes all of us feel very, very happy. You know, you've been a promoter of Blackbird Bend. Uh, you're helping to, to run the, the track here in Norfolk. Uh, talk about that revenue that comes into towns. A lot of times, uh, a lot of your local towns and counties lose sight of that. Do you know roughly how much money a track can bring into a local economy? <clears throat> how they figure that really is that money turns over seven times. Uh, in the community uh, from one to the other to the other and and people might think this is uh, out of line but when you really back it up it's almost a million dollars a year that the money will change hands and rotate in and out of the community of Norfolk only and so because you know we bring racers and people in from all the small surrounding towns that come into this town and, and when they come in, they go eat, they go buy gas, and like I said, they go to Walmart. And every time you spend that dollar, then that gas company spends that dollar. So, so they figure you turn it over seven times, that one dollar that's spent. So when you figure out what we bring in on a weekly basis and multiply that times seven, it, it runs about a million dollars a year during the summer that, that the community of Norfolk actually is involved with him. Wow. Tell you what, without, uh, without further said, let's uh, go take a tour of this uh, wonderful facility here in uh, Norfolk. Sounds good to me. Let's go take a look. The track out here that, that we built was, we got her 60 foot wide in the straightaways and we got it up to 90 foot wide in the corners. Uh, from the bottom to the top of the track, I think we got a 10 or 12 foot rise. So I don't know what degree that would be. But we wanted to make sweeping corners instead of tight, tight, tight corners. so that so the cars can, can really get up some speed on this little track. It's a one-third mile, I think, when they measured it was 1,672 feet um, around on the inside, uh, or down the racing groove, actually. Uh, I think it's a great size racetrack 
for the Midwest. It's not too long and it's not too short. And uh, like I said, we had uh, late models out here the other night, had 16 of them on it and uh, raced two features and had one yellow flag. So, so there's, you know, the track is very raceable. And we got this clay uh, off of a hill out here about two miles and it's pure yellow clay. I don't think there's probably 2% or 3% sand in it. So when that thing gets wet, it becomes very, very sticky and very, very tacky. And uh, the other night in hot laps, the cars never lifted. It was just flat footed all the way around. So it was a lot of fun for them. The drivers actually really liked the size of the racetrack. And uh, so hopefully that's where we're gonna go with it. With the late models being your biggest class, and without a doubt having the most horsepower, what kind of lap times were they turning on this track? Nobody really checked her. I don't think nobody really checked on that, but I will tell you this, it's 12 seconds or better. Uh, they're getting around her pretty good. There you go, folks. Jerry uh, Pospisil from uh, Off-Road Speedway here in Norfolk, Nebraska. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm in my, my pickup, and so if you hear any rattles or anything, don't worry, it's just a Dodge. But I'm in my pickup and we're at Off-Road Speedway in the pits. We're actually gonna drive around, uh, slowly around Off-Road Speedway, give you drivers an idea of just how wide the track is. Uh, maybe you get a sense of the banking. So we're gonna go out here. Now we're coming out, you'll come out on the back straightaway. Of course, you'll see there's the all too familiar corner light. 90 foot wide in the corners, 60 foot on the uh, front straightaways, front and back straightaways. Now the clay base, it is yellow clay. Um, it's two foot deep at the very top. Uh, it's about a foot deep on the very bottom according to Jerry. Um, also according to Jerry and then also the track manager. Uh, it's about three foot wide in the corners in the center of the track. Not gonna lie, kind of wouldn't mind getting on the old Dodge and maybe shooting a rooster tail, but I don't want this old Cummins to fall apart. That's for all you Dodge lovers out there. Turn one looks really square, but when you're in the stands, it's really, really broad, really sweeping, going into turn one. And it may be hard to tell this. I wouldn't consider off-road speedway to be super banked, but it's nowhere near flat either. It's got more of a gradual banking uh, from the very bottom to the outside. The outside wall, is probably, I'm gonna guess, four foot tall on the outside. Here's one thing I do like as a driver about off-road speedway. I'm gonna come up here and show this to you. A lot of tracks, right through here, a lot of tracks, when you're coming down the back straightaway, there'll be an opening in the back straightaway. And on that opening in the back straightaway, the wall will be square, that means there's just a, an open spot. This actually turns back into the pits, so if you, for some reason, were to get into the outside wall, you're, you're not, you shouldn't tear your car in half. Um, if you Google modified bad crash, there's examples of what could happen, and Off-Road Speedway uh, had the foresight to look down the road to help prevent that, and this is what they came up with, and I think it's really, really intriguing. Um, we're gonna do another lap, around the track. Now the infield uh, is actually tapered into the center. So when you go into the infield, which there's no parking in the infield, um, it's all outside track pit parking. They can hold upwards of 300 cars with the overflow parking that they have. The infield is really unique in the fact that, like I said, it is tapered in all directions to the center of the track. In the water table here, uh, they should have they should never have any problem whatsoever of watering the track as the water table is only about eight foot below the infield. Great, great drainage out here. 
Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit the track. So if you're on race night, you're gonna come down the front straight away. And of course, here is your exit in turn one. Uh, I will tell you guys, I'm sorry about the shaky camera. I'm trying to drive and hold the camera at the same time. So we come off the track. Now, I'm not for sure how they're going to run this, but I would imagine you're gonna come around. You'll come around right through here. And what I'm gonna show you now is, here's your scale area. So you'll come around, I'm not gonna drive on the scales, but here's your scale area. You'll come around, and then I believe right over here, I'll roll the window down. Right over here is gonna be your tech area, right through here. I'll actually drive around and I'll show you a uh, an overview or a widened out look. So here you see, here you see the, the uh, scale. And then this is gonna be your tech area right through here. Now the one thing I do find interesting about this track is while the track itself after a heavy rainstorm in a matter of mere hours can be race ready, they're having a problem with the infield being a dirt face, so they are furring and there are kicking or they are correcting, we're taking the corrective uh, steps, I'm sorry, uh, and bringing some slag in to maybe help with the water holes so the pits can be usable. The pits are very, very open, very easy to maneuver, very, very spacious. Well, there you go, folks, that's the tour of Off-Road Speedway. Come see them on Saturday nights for some of the best action in northeastern Nebraska. Back to the studio. Man, Jack, can you imagine you've got a 40-acre field of corn in the first or second week of December, and by April 1st, you have a complete dirt track facility built. Those guys hustled on building that stuff, and they burned the midnight oil. They did everything possible, volunteers, just to get it to where it's at now. How often do you see the ground being tore up and whatnot in the winter time in northern Nebraska. It's it's not like in northern Nebraska we have 80 degree winters up here. No. Nope. Although this year we had some warm days. Yep. <laughs> I mean we did. Yeah. But I you know Jerry's like we were. This is how bad they wanted to race. They were out there at 3:30, 5:30 in the morning sometimes. The, uh, the the track had already been carved out. You know the catch fence and all that wasn't up. The track had already been carved out and they had a row of personal vehicles idling for a couple, two, three hours at a shop with their headlights on because they had no, yeah, no, no lights money. to work by. Yeah, no light. And they were pouring concrete at 3.30, 30 in the morning. Uh, you know, in any of these tracks that I've ever seen built, you're talking the better part of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, eight months to a year. Sure. Uh, in the bathrooms, 13 stalls in the women's bathroom. That's like Kansas Speedway stuff going on there. You are not going to go to Eagle Raceway. Not that Eagle Raceway is a bad place by any means, because I'm not saying that. <laughs> but you don't have 13 stalls in the women's bathroom. Nope. You know, and so when I seen that, I was like, holy cow. And they are very, very, very proud of that facility. And, and they should be. And they should be. And I think it's only going to get better and better and grow and grow and probably end up being one of the premier tracks out here in Nebraska, you know? It's oh, gonna, I would imagine. You know, it's things, when, as soon as they take off, you know how it is when and it gets a good following and a good review and the people like how it's being ran they keep coming back and they make a point to go there every year so you work you have a lawn mowing service or right. a cut right service out of beaver lake so you deal with a lot of lots mud dirt grass you get to play and all that yep and so i kind of wanted your opinion I, I didn't know how much you'd know about this you got to eagle raceway you have a lot of wood chips in in the track surface out of Eagle. Right. You go out to ID Speedway, you know, probably 95% of it's dirt, but you have, if you walk the track, you honestly have a little, a few rocks. Sure. There. Not bad. It's not a bad surface at all. You go to Off-Road Speedway, and you're talking 98% 
literally 98% yellow clay with a 2% sand content. And you know, a lot of these tracks you'll see, you know, eight, eight to 12 inches of clay, you know, and then you got your subsurface. This place is rocking two or three foot of it. Well, you know, and that's, they're lucky that that's predominant soil, but I tell you what, it's gonna get, clay, when it goes dry, slick, and smooth like that, you might as well just be out on a lake full of ice. <laughs> yeah. You know, you better have well, your setup just right. You well, know? if you, but you know, to the other thing, like we talked about getting hit by flying objects, nothing hurts worse than getting smashed in the hand by a rock, you know, because you, you went made it through all the, the screens and stuff. And, yep. And, and, you know, as far as wood chips and stuff, they're doing what they're doing to try to control that spring that's underneath the track. And, you know, you've got to do something. Well, I was to told the wood down. chips, when you water the track. I see people put ground up corn stalks on there and stuff too. Right? Yeah. I, I was told that when you put wood chips on the track or into the track, when you water the track heavily, the wood chips actually they hold the moisture. They hold the moisture. I don't know if that really works out much. All I know is that if you race Eagle Raceway and you, or Boone Speedway over in Boone, Iowa, uh, if you wash your car, you'll have enough wood chips to heat your house for the winter time. I don't know how, about you, but I don't know how many times I've pulled wood chips out of my car somewhere, somehow. Uh, but I, I really was intrigued by the fact that you know it was all 98% yellow clay um, and Jerry when you watch the video he just kind of lays it out there sure uh, what what was really interesting and you and I have talked about this on sling and dirt and this is why I asked the question uh, talk about the revenue that a dirt track will bring into the local economy and he's like well the dollar turns over seven times He's like, when you, and when you add it all up, it brings about a million dollars into the local economy. Oh, it has to, at least. So, you know, I just want to, I'm not going to get on a soapbox here, but when you go to Off-Road Speedway, or you go to Eagle Raceway, or you go to IE Speedway, uh, which I believe is under the Greenwood Municipality, uh, you go to Shelby County Speedway Beatrice, over there, in Hart, or Beatrice, support your dirt tracks, because... Sometimes the stuff that your kids receive in school, you know, for schoolwork or maybe those potholes on your street that all of a sudden miraculously got covered and you ain't got to deal with broken ball joints on your street vehicle by running over a pothole. Where do you think some of that money came from? You know, I'm not saying that we're, you know, dirt track racing is the holy grail and the fix all of the local communities, but it gives money back to the local economy. That's a million dollars a year well, going sure, back you know. into the Norfolk you, business industry. I mean, we pull into town, if it's not, you know, your your local track, and you, you know, we, we've all traveled, and you pull into town, you, you gotta get gas, and you need ice, or you gotta buy munchies, and then you get yeah. done racing, you gotta buy gas again, you gotta buy more munchies, or you spend the night, you know, and you go get a hotel or a campground, you know, that money all trickles down back into those local economies, and I think any town that has a dirt track, it also gives them a different personality, in which the community rallies around, you know, if you... Just out of curiosity, let's say Eagle Raceway was to shut down. It's not, there's no rumors, don't blow up the Facebook world. But let's say hypothetically, a scenario, Eagle Raceway shuts down. How much of a major impact does that have on the town of Eagle, Nebraska, you think? Oh God, it'd be huge, because Eagle's just a little town to begin with, so, you know, the yeah. taxes that that track brings and things like that. The Atra Speedway, even more so. Sure. I mean, you know, Eagle's two miles outside of, Eagle Raceway's two miles outside of Eagle. The Atra Speedway is in the town of Atra Speedway. Right. And both Eagle and Beatrice have a long, long, uh, shiny history within the sport of dirt track racing, but you take something like Beatrice, Beatrice Speedway is such an integral part of Beatrice history. And yeah, it's, it's totally, it's the personality of the town, it's been there for years and years, it's in their fairgrounds. I know? think anybody who knows Beatrice, Nebraska, not, not Speedway, the town. Right. If you go, give me two things about the town, I will guarantee you one of those two things is I, whether you're a race fan or not, yes. is racetrack. Race yep. the, the racetrack. So, you know, everybody get out, support your local tracks. I don't care if you're in North Dakota, Maine, Vermont, Canada, Australia, Shinzinko Speedway in Japan, <laughs> you know, Vladimir Putin Speedway in Moscow. Go to your local track. 
you know, they're, you're supporting your local community, you're, spo you're supporting your local drivers. Your and local you're gonna town. get a hell of a good show and you'll yes. be entertained and it's well worth the money that it costs to get into these races. I can't believe that they charge as little as they do you know, to get into a race, you know. And ten, then some of them are ten, getting the free driver yeah, appreciation you know, $10 nice. and, you know, like a while back we went to the Garth Brooks concert. Now, how much did that cost us to go spend a couple hours to listen to music versus spending I don't know, my check was free. <laughs> spending several hours. <laughs> well, Miss Sandy says they're quite expensive, so. Yeah. But, you know, so it's a cheap night out for the family. You get good entertainment. You're outside, you know, fresh air. Support your local dirt track. So with that being said, you know, we're going to go to a sponsor and try to make some money for the show. So we'll be right back. Joe's Karting is the Metro's fastest indoor karting facility. Come to Joe's to experience speed. Join the competition and ride the fastest indoor track around. Our professionally designed indoor karting track is perfect for arrive and drive racing, race classes, and racing competitions. We offer affordable pricing options, membership packages, event outings, and so much more. Stop in today to get registered for your next race, and don't forget to like us on Facebook for deals, giveaways, and more. Visit us online at joeskarting.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to Slingin' Dirt TV, presented by Joe's Carding. It's that time of the week for the all too popular Songer Says. So here we go, here's Jamie Songer. Warning, the related content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Today's subject is the internet racer and how annoying they are. You know the guy. Hey, I'm looking for this, or hey, I need this, or hey, I need that. And you've never seen a son of a bitch in a race car at the track, ever! Or, I need sponsorship. And then he gets sponsorship and he don't show up at the racetrack. That's why we can't get sponsorships, because jackasses like you people, you know? I'm building a car. It's going to be so fast. When I get this car done, cannot wait. In memory of my sister or memory of my dad. And then the car never gets done. Your father in heaven is saying, what a piece of crap! Let alone what everybody else thinks. I mean... If you're gonna build a race car, fine, howdy do dandy woohoo for you, but at least build it. Don't sit there and try and be Barney wannabe, cause you look like an idiot. I mean, oh, I'm going to get this car done. Cannot wait till my car is done. My car will be fast. Oh, I'm, I'm going to love racing with all you guys. None of us want to race with you cause you're a liar. And the first step to a thief is being a liar. Don't need them. If you're not building a race car, then don't tell me about it. Or, if you are building a race car, I don't need freaking updates every two days of, Well, put these shocks on tonight. How exciting. I have these shocks mounted. Big freaking deal. I don't care. I really don't. Or girlfriend help tonight. Thank you so much. You know what? Woohoo for you. But two days ago, you were bitching about what a bitch she was. Now she helped me on the race car. Going to be a family thing. Cannot wait. Woohoo! You guys all look like dumbasses. I mean, I don't need an update on what's going on with your car every 30 seconds. I don't need to know where you're racing. I don't even care. If I did, I'd call and ask, hey, where are you racing? I don't care. Maybe your sponsors do, but most of you that do this don't have sponsors. It's like you're trolling for sponsorship or something. So, if you're building a race car, that's great. A couple updates here and there, hey, got the body mounted, I'm all for that, that's neat. But I don't need it every 30 seconds. When you mount a cluster gauge, I really don't care. Or you change tires, I don't care. And for all you guys who wanna be race car drivers and say you're building a race car and then it never makes it to the track, you're crap. You're a piece of crap. You're a liar and you will soon be a thief and no one should ever loan you anything. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt. Today's tech tip is tarp, so hang on, stay dry, keep yourself clean. This is a great tip. You'll love it. Hey, welcome back to Slingin' Dirt. We got a brand new tech tip of the week. I'm even going to give Buddy Ray kudos for this one because this was his idea. He stole from somebody else, I'm sure. He I, I stole from him. Scott Bloomquist. He said he didn't do it, come up with it for himself, no. but he did supply me with a tarp and it's made a huge difference. Just, I know my crew chief loves it, so we're going to show you what we got is a tarp here. And what'd you get it off of a grain truck or? No, actually, what it is, uh, and they're free. They're they're easy, incredibly easy to get a hold of. You just go to a farmer, go to a grain truck uh, supplier, manufacturer. I actually went to a trucking company, Council Bluffs, 
I asked them if they had a tarp. I told them what I wanted to do with it. it it's just an old, old tarp. They were going to throw it away. So I got it. It was about 50 foot long. I cut a section off for you, Johnny Bright, and myself. And so far, we're, we're loving it. Uh, they're great. So let's go ahead and we'll yep. roll it out and show a little bit of these. The nice thing about these is that make sure you have your tarp fully extended all the way. So now if you're at a lot of dirt tracks, say you're at a dirt track like Eagle Raceway, you're at an infield of Shelby County Speedway, IED yeah. Speedway, wherever, now we have to uh, sweep this off and I'll actually let me grab my broom. Yeah, what these do does is when you put your car on here, it's nice and clean, your crew chief, you even in your driver's suit, whatever, you can get under the car and take a look at stuff without getting dirty. And along with that, um, jacks roll on this real nice. They so do. You, so you're not grabbing rocks and things like that. It just makes life a whole lot easier. Another thing is it's economically friendly because if you can see if your car like Buddy Jones, it's leaking fluid everywhere. It collects that and it doesn't harm the environment by going into the dirt. So it's, it's very eco-friendly in that way. Um, it's easy first, to wipe off, easy to sweep off. It, yep, easy to wipe off, easy to, easy to sweep off. Now, right. you alluded to uh, the fact that we had some fluid. We had a couple transmissions blow up. My crew chief, Fred, likes this because, like you said, you can roll the jacks in and off the, uh, the tarp really easy. It collects all the fluid right here. But the nice thing is, is once you get home, just take the pr uh, pressure washer, sprinkle a little simple green on it, comes right off, you're good to go. Let it air dry, it takes about five minutes in, the, yep. in this uh, summer heat that we have up here, and you're good to go. The one thing I will tell you is, go buy some great big penny nails or something like that, some washers, and make sure you stake the corners down. That will make your uh, uh, experience with the tarp uh, a really good one, so. Yeah, if it gets windy, they kind of want to blow up. But... You know, even though yep. they're on the ground, they're kind of heavy, but yeah, definitely stake down the corners and keep a couple extras in the trailer, and then don't run over them when you're done. Yep, don't run over, you don't want a hot rod, you don't want to buzz the tires, nothing like that on the tarp. You know, for a cheap investment, this is one of the nicest things I've ever had in my pits, and it man, I, I'm glad I, I got you one, I'm glad yep. I got one, so. I, I'm grateful for it, I tell you what, so is my crew chief. So, folks, there you go, you want to keep her neat and clean and be safe, get yourself a tarp. Uh, we'll be, go back to you in the studio. I think you kind of thought when I turned you on to this, uh, this idea, I think you might have thought, oh, well, we'll see how it goes. And now you, you actually like it. Well, I, I do. First of all, you know, it's a good idea. It wasn't your idea, but it was good. No, it wasn't my idea. It was good that you passed it on. And I'll tell you what, you know, having a tarp to lay on is, is a good thing. I can see the benefits of it. Their jacks roll on it easier, especially in some of these infields that you are can, a little more rocky than they are dirt. Yep. You know, it makes for, makes it nice for that. And I'm sure that my crew chief, JP4, really likes it because he's not covered in dirt all the time. And Well, when I was talking to BJ at the track about it, what he likes about it, and we talked about it with, you know, on one of your tech tips with the uh, impacts and mm -hmm. changing stuff. You know, so everybody can see here that our, our tablecloth is black, but if you drop a shiny nut and bolt, you see that on the right. tarp. It doesn't get, sh uh, you know, oh, mixed in with the dirt and gets pressed down on the ground and right. you lose it. It's all right here. Also, if you're using a tarp and the car pulls off the tarp and you get ready to go get in the lineup chute, well, one of your crew members can take just a regular shop room. You can sweep, you sweep it, off. it off, and that is and that is really, it is really nice. And you know, just make sure that you stake down the edges. You know, we found out if you don't stake down the edges, the tarp will yep. pull when you try to back off of it with the car, or if the wind is blowing really bad. Then you know you want to stake it down. But other than that, it's almost like having a concrete pit stall, just a little bumpier. That's all. Yeah, just a little bumpier. The uh, the only thing I don't like about the tarp. Well, let me take that back. The only thing Fred don't like about the tarp is if you blow up a transmission, you do collect the uh, some of the fluids on, underneath the tarp. Right. But you know what? I got to think about that. Is that really kind of an, a benefit to the track? Because well, we were talking is. about that. We were talking about, the, it, we were talking about the, the, yeah, it keeps, keeps it from seeping into the ground, and then you're not leaving your carbon footprint. And 
you know, you could just swipe it up with rags. And... Well, I know you're all about leaving your carbon footprint. I am. Yeah, you know, I, uh, <laughs> but I'll do my part to, to save Mother Earth, you know. Uh, but I was thinking about that. But at the same time, also, it, it, you know, if you get a little bit of oil and grease on the tarp, uh, it doesn't take much to power wash the darn thing. No, no. And they're you not Dawn heavy. dish soap and you lay it out on your driveway, Dawn take dish it, soap, scrub it, it yep. just wash it off and it's good and clean. Yep. The one thing I will say is if they get wet, let them dry out because they get mildewy when you fold them up. And they, yeah, I've noticed that dry. too. And, and they're not very heavy. No. Uh, if you missed where I got it from, the tarp is off of a 52 foot drain trailer. Right, the top's to them. And the neat thing is, I don't care where you're at, there's truck shops all over the United States. So just go into the, the, the shop, especially like a drain facility, like a Tempty trailer shop, uh, where they deal with a lot of grain trailers. A lot of times they'll take these tarps off because the farmer thinks they're wore out, they're abused, whatever. They're just going to throw the darn thing well, away. Well, it's also a federal regulation that they have to have those covering their loads, and if they get torn or a little tattered, then the corn or grain can fly out, hit you in the windshield, and that's yep. why they take them off and replace them. You know, so if they're just going to throw them away, well, what I did is, it was kind of funny, that one out at I-80, we laid the whole thing out, and it was, it was kind of heavy, it was kind of cumbersome, uh, and we fit three cars on there, so we just measured it, and I broke it down into to individual chunks, and right. it was a lot more manageable, but it, it was free. Yep. Um, I actually got the idea, and I know he's not the one that started it, I got yeah. the idea from Scott Bloomquist. Sure. I was like, wow, I could really see where that would be beneficial. We're not rolling around in the dirt. You know, you come in off the track, you scrape the mud off the car, you take the push for it, you pull it off the tarp, or you sweep it off the tarp. There's gonna be nights where we're not gonna have much mud on the car sure. because it's dry, slick, it's hot. So then you can just take your four foot air wand, just walk out there, blow the dirt off the tarp, you're good to go. And one benefit I saw, I don't know about you and your Dodge, but in my Dodge, I saw an immediate decrease in the amount of dirt and dust and mud getting into my truck. I seen a lot of that really quick. Because I before- <laughs> It's well, funny you say that. I see the immediate advantage of my crew chief not being dirty and dusty and then crawling into my truck. Well, all I know is that when you didn't have a tarp, you were, it doesn't matter where you, yeah, you were on the ground. Right. So you're getting grass clippings, you're getting dirt, you're getting dust, and all of a sudden, my truck's a lot cleaner. I mean, you saw, you should have saw that today. Well, yeah. You've seen my truck too, though. I, yeah. own, I own a mowing company, so it's pretty much looks like a, you could probably plant a garden in it anyway. But anyways, um, back, to, back to tarps. It's a great idea. Go find yourself a tarp. You won't regret it. And let us know if you try it, how you like it. So there you go, bud. Yep. So I tell you what, we're going to take a uh, break and we're actually uh, going to go talk to one of our sponsors. We'll be right back here on Sling and Dirt presented by Joe's Cardi. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt TV, presented by Joe's Karting. Joe's Karting, your place to race, where the only restriction is just how slow you are. And we know he's really slow. He's slower than I am. Good God. The Grand Canyon was carved out of the Colorado River faster than what you could get around the racetrack. And your ego is big as the Grand Canyon, and you're full of water. All I know is the Grand Canyon might be full of water, and it might be huge, but it's a beautiful sight. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you can't even if, you, if you guys aren't tired of Buddy Ray, you need to email him with Fan of the Week questions. Yes. Fan of the Week questions, we're, we're getting you t-shirts, you get race passes. race passes, Joe's carding passes. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you guys send us in a headshot, your question. And where you like to watch races. Where you like to watch races and we'll get you on the air. Yeah, when you email your question, so name, headshot, where you're from, because we need an address to send your stuff to. If you don't want your headshot uh, shown, that's fine because sometimes there might be young kids or 
ladies or, you know, men that, you know, might look worse than Jack. And we don't need anybody looking worse than Joe Dirt on the show. So, uh, with that being said, just email us a question that we can talk about as drivers. Nothing negative. We use your question. If we get multiple questions, we'll pick one randomly. And if we use it, you're going to be the fan of the week. You're going to get a driver's t-shirt, free race passes to Joe's Karting, and local dirt tracks around the area. And, you know, like I said, it's free, so why not? Hey, it's a good deal. I'm thinking about doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, you're so slow, you might as well be a fan. I mean, you just kind of watch the cars go right by. I do. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, and it's, we've got 10 or 11 of them out there, and they're yep. pretty funny. They're hilarious. <laughs> Listen up. Jamie Songer from Sup uh, Supreme Lawn and Landscaping, one of our sponsors here on this fine educational show, uh, is doing the Victory Lane Dance Celebration. Now here's what you do. It doesn't matter if you're four years old in a cage cart or if you're 90 years old in a World of Outlaw Sprint Car. Every class, as long as you race on something that's round and brown from a cage cart to a sprint car, if you win the feature, ideally we'd like to have you somehow take a video from Victory Lane of you doing your Victory Lane Dance. It doesn't necessarily have to be PG, just no nudity allowed. We want to stress that because some people might go that far. So uh, do your victory lane dance. You can do anything you want with yourself or the team or whatever. Post it to the Sling and Dirt TV Facebook page. Uh, for every one like you get, you get one point. For every share you get, you get five points. And if you win, if you win, five hundred dollars. Now, I don't know of a race car driver that couldn't use that. I can use $500. Now, all I need to do is win and be able to dance. Yeah, no. Two things it, I don't see happening. Songer's already danced. Yeah. But we got 10 or 11 of them out there. Songer, J Jack and I, we are all eligible now. Songer's got the win. My win's coming up. Jack, it's, he's joked during the dirt track racing. He ain't gonna win. So, uh, I'm a winner in my heart. Yeah. Remember, I'm a <laughs> Big and bold, beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, Keep in mind the uh, Supreme Lawn and Landscaping Victory Lane Dance uh, dance Off, $500. Anyways, one point per like, five points per share from the Facebook page. It runs all the way through August 1st. August 1st, you can still enter the, on that race night, but after that, Jamie, Jack, and I will actually go through, and I've been keeping score pretty good on Facebook. Yep. The other thing we got going too is the Team Jack Team Bud Challenge for the season points at I-80. If you guys want to get involved with that, get on Facebook, pick your team, which you want to which one you want to be, you want to be on. on team jack team bud and then pick um how many points you think we're going to accumulate and who the winner is going to be and if you are the lucky winner you're going to get three free races against me and buddy ray at joe's Actually, karting i think we mentioned 10. was it 10 all right yeah. 10 free races 10 free races at Did joe's you... karting against Wait, us you got to pick team jack team bud you got to choose how many points we only got one shot to pick how many points you think your team captain's going to accrue in the NASCAR Wayland All-American uh, Weekly Series at I-80 Speedway. Specials aren't allowed. Uh, closest without going over the number of points. So if you guess 605 and I only get 600 points, well then you're out. So closest without going over points. So right now, Team Jack is in the lead, so. Yeah, that ain't gonna last very long, no. So remember, Grand Canyon, Joker. So. Tell you what, we'll be back here next week with another fine educational edition of here of Sling and Dirt presented by Joe's Carding uh, in Council Bluffs. Right. So, Great uh, place to spend your money. Yep, where all your dreams and aspirations can come true. So uh, come back and see us next week. It's been Sling and Dirt.